So I'm pretty sure you all know by now that, you know, you can either get an iPad or a MacBook and, you know, most people have one or the other, but I wanted to take a look basically at the cheapest MacBook you can buy and the cheapest iPad you can buy currently and pretty much see, you know, how they both compare. You know, I've done a billion comparisons before, so this one is completely no different if I'm being honest. The cheapest MacBook you can buy right now, which is the M1 MacBook Air, believe it or not, is a very good MacBook. People are saying it's probably one of the best priced MacBooks out there, and I probably agree. I mean, this is a very good machine. The difference between a MacBook Air now and a MacBook Pro is, you know, tightening up. There's less and less differences per year, which is pretty interesting until we get that quad USB type C option MacBook Pro, which I don't think we'll ever get that for the, you know, MacBook Air, then those will mean pretty big differences. But currently, it's tightening up, man. There's very few differences. Or the iPad, I've always kind of felt like the same way with the cheapest iPad that is currently being sold, which is the 8th gen iPad. I mean, there's less differences, I think, from the base model iPad, you know, 10.2 inch to the most expensive 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now, of course, there are differences for sure. I mean, that one looks better. The 4th gen looks, you know, far better. It's performance heavy and stuff like that. And it's funny because the same thing is, you know, for the MacBook. When you compare this MacBook to the most expensive 16-inch MacBook, there are some differences. And the 16-inch MacBook is probably the better one. But because of that new chipset inside of it, that just makes me think the MacBook Air is going to be that much better of a, you know, MacBook overall and just that much better of a device. And since these two things both have, you know, stock Apple components, I mean, I mean, that's a really huge asset for both these devices. So the MacBook Air currently right now, you can actually pick it up for $999, which I I think it's a pretty good price to pay. I mean, it's definitely not the most expensive thing in the world, but I mean, for a new device with a new chipset inside of it, that is something that is extremely, extremely impressive. Now, on the other hand, with the iPad, there's a lot of them being for sale, but for the base model, you know, with no Wi-Fi cellular or anything, it's cost $329 for that model. So there's about, you know, over a $500 difference between these things for sure. Actually, it's like six over $600, wow. And some people may just assume that, oh yeah, for sure the iPad is the better value per dollar. And it might be, but there's still a lot of differences for sure that make the MacBook Air, in my opinion, a better, you know, device overall. But depending per person, it may be a little bit different. Now, they both have different size screens obviously 10.2 inch on the ipad 13 inch on the macbook air so in terms of that there's really hard, it's kind of hard to you know compare both but in terms of a functionality standpoint both panels are about the same there's no 120 hertz on either one of these panels or anything so they both function about the same resolution is probably going to be around the same as well they're both retina panels which is really good so you're not going to look at the macbook air panel and look at the ipad 10.2 inch panel in my opinion and notice you know crazy amounts of differences there's going to be differences for sure, but not probably in the sense that you're thinking of. So when it comes down to that standpoint, both of them are great. The biggest differentiating factor, in my opinion, between both, besides the functionality standpoint, is probably in the software department, which is interesting because a lot of people may just seem like, oh, they're both, you know, Apple, Mac OS, iOS, same thing, right? Even though it's iPad OS on the iPad, I will tell you, there are still a lot of features and just a lot of apps that are currently built in with a MacBook that you won't necessarily get on an iPad. Now, I currently own a lot of iPads. I have a lot of MacBooks as well, but I can never just go ahead and shift my whole entire use over to an iPad fully. There's always going to be something that a MacBook can do that an iPad cannot do. And even though it's a cheaper device, both these are the cheapest ones that both these manufacturers make in the brand new market, I would still say I would rather spend the extra money getting a you know MacBook Air, the base model, than the iPad just based off the features and just based off the apps that I currently use. So apps that I use on an everyday basis, for example, I use Photoshop, I use Final Cut Pro, I use Safari, I use some other tools as well. But when you think about that, you're like, oh, well, the iPad, you know, that has Photoshop kind of built in, right? That has Safari, that has, you know, video editing capability. But to change my whole entire workflow from using, from going to a MacBook or an iMac to going, switching to an iPad is asking for a lot. You know, that's going to change a lot of my workflow. And I'm currently not used to using the specific tools. You know, I'll have to find apps that are kind of like do the same thing for an iPad. Audacity is another huge thing. Audio editing capability is a huge thing on my iMac or on my MacBook that I can't necessarily do on an iPad, you know, natively. There's no Audacity app, you know, yet. Hopefully they make one in the future, but that would be a huge thing. I've always had to, you know, find workarounds, you know, with apps that I had to download. And so it just seems like it's kind of like a light version of a MacBook, but for that price tag for $329, I am willing to go ahead and shift to that if it means that I can get kind of the same experience 
for a much lesser price tag. Now, it really just depends on your use case. For this big of a difference, even though these are the cheapest ones both these makes, there's still a really big difference in terms of the capability between these. Now, the Mac Mini is a much better, you know, device, I think, for the most part, but that is not a standalone device, just like how these two are. So even though that one costs like $699 or something, it's still not pertinent to these because it's not really comparable. But when you look at the 10.2 inch iPad, you are getting a lot in this specific form factor. And I've always said this and I'll say it again. If you're a student, if you're a college student, high school student, whatever student you are, and you need some type of device like right out the gate, the iPad is the lowest bar to entry of getting something that has a lot of potential and a lot of power at a super cheap price tag. For $329, you're getting that Apple A12 Bionic chip, which is like only like two versions behind of chipsets, but currently the iPad Pro 4th generation and 3rd generation both have chipsets that are based off that Apple A12 chip. I think the, you know, iPad Air 4 is the, you know, newest one with the newest chipset, and that costs $499 or $599, so definitely this iPad 10.2 inch is going to be able to handle everything you throw at it. The software experience is going to be great because it's going to be getting software for a very, very long time. It's going to rival something like the 13-inch Mac book. Actually, probably not. The 13-inch MacBook is probably still going to outlast it in some ways, but definitely this iPad has a lot of capability, and for that price tag, like I stated, it's very hard to compete for a lot of different people out there. Now, when you look at that 13-inch MacBook, like I stated before, this would always be my go-to. If you have the money, it is always my thing to recommend to people. Outside of just, you know, like the portability aspect, the feature aspect, everything, it just seems like you're getting much more from the MacBook Air than the iPad 10.2 inch, but that makes sense because that's a $1,000 MacBook. The 10.2 inch iPad is a $329 iPad. So there's definitely going to be some differences. I am expecting that the most expensive device out of these two is going to be able to have more features and more capability. That's just a given. I'm, you know, I would be weirded out if it didn't have that capability. But again, with that 10.2 inch iPad for that price tag, it's extremely, extremely impressive. Now, another thing with that iPad and the cheapest one at that is that you're getting a dual camera setup which is, I think, really awesome. There's only one camera on the MacBook Air, which makes sense as the front-facing camera, but on that 10.2-inch iPad, you basically have the capability of, you know, filming things, and if you're a student, like I said, or if you're, a, you know, a business professional, you need to take pictures of a lot of things, you know, of boardroom meetings, or if you're just trying to use an iPad as a media device and you take pictures or whatever, who cares, you have the capability of using that back camera on the front camera on that 10.2-inch iPad than the MacBook. Now, some people may say, oh, bro, like, we have our phones. Why don't we just do it on our phones instead? Well, that makes a lot of sense, but a lot of people, I mean, then it's just like, why don't you just, you know, type a paper on your phone? Why don't you just do your work on your phone? Why do you even need either of these things? It's kind of cool to have some separation sometimes. So that's why things like an iPad, I know a lot of people who use a MacBook and an iPad because of the features that the iPad has, which is weird because usually it's the opposite for me. But there are some features natively built into the iPads that work better. Things like the Apple Pencil. That is a huge thing and a huge reason why people pick up an iPad over a MacBook. That first-gen Apple Pencil support, which I think is awesome, you know, I still think it's you know has a lot of capability. That is something that a lot of people use. And for creatives out there who need to, you know, mark on notes or draw on things or whatever, you're going to have that type of capability on the iPad. And like I said before, that's a huge contender as to why people tend to use an iPad and a MacBook rather than just one or the other because of the specific feature set that an iPad has versus a MacBook. And it's weird because for me specifically, I don't really use an Apple Pencil. I do have one. I just don't use it that often because everything I do, honestly, my handwriting is really bad, so it doesn't really matter. But for a MacBook, it just screams that it has more features. But if you ask the next person, they would say the opposite. They would say the iPad has so much more features. You have gesture-based design. You can go ahead and swipe through things and download a bunch of apps. And the games that you have available on the iPad are just always so much better than the MacBook. And I'll probably argue that as a media device, the iPad is the far better way to go. If you're somebody who wants to work and have fun, the iPad, I think, is always a better way to go. And because the iPad has the same chipset almost as, you know, the latest and greatest iPad Pro, that is that says a lot about the specific iPad. Now, the RAM management, you know, the MacBook has a higher chance of getting more RAM. So that's, a you know, more of an asset there. But definitely when it comes down to it, the iPad, you can't really, you know, end it there either. For that price tag, for both of these, surprisingly, there's a big difference in price. And I would say, and I would argue that there's a big difference into how some people could use this. I don't feel like a MacBook or an iPad 
are good substitutes for each other. And here's the thing, here's the beauty of it. That's exactly what Apple wants. Apple doesn't want an iPad to replace a MacBook, and Apple doesn't want a MacBook to replace an iPad. And the main reason for this is because they want you to buy both. They want you to buy both an iPad and a MacBook. It just makes perfect sense. They make more money, and the end user gets to have, you know, both two functional products. I mean, it's the same thing. If Apple made a one-stop shop of a MacBook that converted to a phone that converted to an iPad, and it was one device, I mean, something like a foldable iPhone, I really don't think... Apple would like something like that because that would not only cannibalize iPhone sales, but it would cannibalize iPad sales as well. Like maybe iPhone sales will go up, but the iPad sales would end up going down because more people just don't really want that big of a device and a big iPad. So it just kind of makes sense in that way. So there's a reason the, all these videos and even I'm conflicted a little bit of recommending one because Apple doesn't want you to just to choose from one. They want you to pick up both. And at the same time, they want you to pick up an Apple Pencil and, oh, they want you to pick up AirPods too. And, you know, do you need a case for those? You know, here's a case for it. And, you know, it just kind of goes on and it totally makes sense for me. You know, I, I think for sure when it comes down to it, something like an iPad has so much capability and something like a MacBook has so much capability too. But for that price tag, it's a beautiful thing for that iPad because it's fairly cheap, you know, compared to a lot of iPads across the board and just tablets in general, because you know, the support of this iPad is going to be out of this world. It's going to be lasting for a long time. It's not going to end tomorrow. You can say the same thing about the MacBook too. So that's pretty much how both these things compare, to be honest. If you guys have any other questions or if you're confused by anything I said, pretty much this whole video, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly, everything else, every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.